Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the survey results. Remember those surveys that we did, the like 30 minute video that I did, even though it took me an hour to fill out those surveys? Well, Sega just posted out a notice saying that they have looked over all of the survey results and they have picked three things that they are going to be prioritizing. And in today's video, we're going to be talking all about that. But first of all, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily. So if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. So the very first thing I want to do before we deep dive into that is the special scratch tickets. I have 10 of them. I've been saving this for quite some time and uh, I'm going to do a 10 pull now because I do believe that in 10 pulls we get maybe a little bit better luck. Um, actually, I'm going to do my free pull first. Hopefully I don't use up all my luck. Okay, good. No rainbow. I didn't use up any of my RNG luck. And we got, okay, whatever. As long as it's not a viper tongue, I am happy. Nice. All right, now we're going to do our 10 pull. And uh, here we go. Let's hope we get something good. Rainbow. Yes. Beautiful. I think it's guaranteed rainbow at 10 pulls. Yeah, there's one rainbow. All right. We got cheer one, 10 SG ticket, rapid parasol. We got the face, augmentation A plus 20%, pool fun. Yes. The ride personal transporter. This was the thing I wanted. I think. I hope. Okay, close. We're gonna, yeah, we're just gonna use all. I, I really don't care. So I think that personal transporter one is, yes, it's this. Yes, I finally got it. This thing is awesome. All right, so what we're gonna do is um, we need to go uh, control settings, keyboard, emotes, alt F. Alt F here. Dance 2, we're gonna change it to the personal thing, whatever that was called. Ride personal transporter, there we go. All right, look at that, we can move forward. Okay, let, let's actually get onto flat ground. So now we can move forward, we can right click to uh, turn right, we can left click to turn left, that's pretty cool. What about the male version? I think the male version is the exact same thing. Oh, the turns are a little bit more pronounced, I guess, on the male version. Yeah. So on the male version of this emote, if you just right click once, you actually do like a 90 degree turn. While on the female version, if you right click or left click, you do like a 45 degree turn instead. But that is pretty cool. I am finally happy that I got this. I've been wanting this emote ever since I first saw it. So I am hecka happy that, uh, we can now see it now that I finally got it. So yeah, of course, totally 100%, 1000% scientifically proven that if you do 10 pulls, you get better items. Yep, to totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please don't take that seriously. Anyway, with that said, let us jump over to see what the official post is. So we can see right here, thank you Arcs for sending us your comments and feedbacks regarding this episode. As of November 5th, the NGS team has reviewed all of them. We will prioritize addressing and investigating the following issues. Katana mobility, more challenging gameplay elements, a bug that occurs when players sit in a chair in Central City. If you would like to send us comments and feedback, please post them on Twitter using the NGS headline hashtag. Once again, thank you very much for supporting NGS. So the first point I personally am very happy about because you know I am a braver main that is my main class so seeing that they are addressing katana mobility as one of their priorities I am very very happy however I want you guys to pay notice to the wording they didn't say braver mobility they chose to say katana mobility so this leads me to speculate multiple things so if they're changing the katana mobility the katana specifically you literally only have three different attacks you have your left click your right click and then your weapon action so if they're going to change anything for the katana mobility well then i can only assume that they're going to be changing the weapon action because changing the right click wouldn't make any sense because right click is literally you know all of your pas right so if they change how that worked fundamentally it would change all of our pas which doesn't make any sense that seems like way too much work and i don't think the dev team has time and you know are willing to put in the resources to do that if they change our auto attacks, that doesn't make much sense either, unless they want to go back to like just attacks, where if you time your attack as the enemy's about to hit you, you do like a perfect counter where you dodge behind them and do a backstab or something. But that doesn't make sense again because 
they took away just attacks or perfect attacks because they wanted to make NGS more accessible. So, you know, that's out of the question. And so this really only leaves weapon action. So what exactly can they do with the weapon action? What I'm thinking is right now when we do our perfect counter, so when you time the weapon action right before you get hit, you do a counter back. So what I'm thinking is, okay, so when you do the counter, maybe you get more anime-esque. Okay, I've been playing a lot of Lost Ark, all right? So I'm like super into the whole mobility thing. And I feel like they, they can copy Lost Ark on where when you do a perfect counter, you teleport behind the enemy and you're right in front of the enemy, but you're behind them. And so that could be something that they could do. Um, it would be really, really awesome if they did that because, uh, yeah, I would love to be able to just, all right, you know, every time I counter, I immediately teleport behind the enemy or even better, I teleport in front of the enemy's weak spot. That would be the best because I'd be teleporting towards the enemy's weak spot every single time simply by just countering and bravers would feel super good, especially with brave spirit coming out. Then you would be able to just dish out huge damage by uh, counters, which is one of the Braver's more signature moves. Sure, I know a lot of classes in NGS now have counters, but in base PSO2, that was the Braver's jam. That was what made the Braver so special. It had a high skill cap because you had to counter everything, you had to learn boss rotations, blah, 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 and it was super duper awesome. And so I'm hoping that that is what they're looking into. However, on top of this, it leaves me a little bit hopeful that, hey, if they're addressing the katana specifically, does this mean that future classes coming out are going to be able to use the katana? Like in base PSO2, we had the phantom that could use katana. Does this mean that we are getting future classes, something similar to like the phantom that might come out maybe at the end of episode two or the beginning of episode three? That would be super cool, super interesting. I can't wait to see what they throw at us in the next NGS headline because we get to see the new roadmap for the next year so that is 2022 so um yeah i really can't wait i'm super happy about this so yep katana mobility that is something really really good second point makes me even more excited more challenging gameplay elements so more challenging content give us a reason why we should be upgrading our gear and the battle deal with the purple triggers is a very good example and a really big incentive to uh let people know that hey you should gear up so that you can do this end game content because you get rewards and all this stuff however unfortunately the battle deal was released a little bit too close to episodes 2 release or chapter 2's release and so i think a lot of people are holding off and not doing the purple triggers because of a we are getting the new title system so we're gonna wait and save our triggers until the title system comes out because we know one of the achievements is run battle dia and do battle dia stuff so it's like okay you know i'm just gonna save all of my triggers until the title system comes out and two is because all of the gear that you can get right now in the battle dia is you know four star rarity stuff like that you can get your stragas you can get some gigantic capsule stuff like that but most people are just waiting because they're like yo listen i'm gonna get five star rarity weapons six star rarity weapons when episode two or chapter two comes out and then i'll come back and i'll freaking destroy these gigantics because i'm gonna be level 35 they're gonna be level 24 it's gonna be super easy da -de da -de da so hopefully sega has thought this through and when we do get the level cap increase the purple triggers will also scale up the yellow triggers will also scale up or even better we just get a new battle dia in the new region i feel like that would make much more sense because you know people are still trying to progress new players are going to try to level up so leave the current yellow triggers leave the current purple triggers for those players so that they can still do the content that they want they can still level up they can still progress efficiently and then in the new region just have new battle dia where the people who want the six star rarity weapons they want the really new shiny augments then they can farm it there and of course the yellow triggers if you want to level up super duper fast then you just run those yellow triggers in the new region so that's what i'm thinking and last but not least is of course you know combat zones you know give us the rank three rank four combat zones so that you know there's more incentive for people to come back to farm old content maybe help out your friends stuff like that other than this i don't know what other challenging gameplay elements you guys may have written in the survey if i missed anything please let me know in the comment section below i'm actually really curious to see what you guys wrote in the survey regarding challenging gameplay elements 
Now the last one is a bit of a head scratcher for me, a bug that occurs when players sit in a chair in Central City. So yes, I know of the bug where you try to sit down and then you automatically stand up immediately because I think it had something to do with like the server's refresh pull rate or something and it's like if there's too many people trying to sit down like the server refreshes and like kicks everyone off their chairs or something. I heard something about that but obviously I'm not a game designer so I don't know how these things work. But I just find it really weird that they put that in a priority to fix sitting. I'm pretty sure there's a lot more things in the questionnaire that a lot of people wanted fixed, you know, over the sitting part. But maybe there was a lot of JP players that wanted this fixed because of screenshot purposes. I do know that there is a huge community in the JP side which love to do screenshots. And so maybe this was from the JP side. I don't think the global side really cared too much about the sitting part, maybe you guys did, but from the people that I've talked to, most of them never even mentioned this. I didn't even mention this either in my questionnaire, so I was a little bit surprised when I saw this. I was like, oh, oh, okay, interesting, you know, that pretty cool, I guess, but it doesn't matter. Two out of three, I'm really, really happy that they're targeting two core elements that is directly going to affect my class specifically and just make the game a little bit more interesting, give us more stuff to do. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye. Can I say except you